Hey there, class. Professor Steve here. Um, and following the plate tectonics lecture, where we learned sort of the structure and um, and features of the of the seafloor topography and how how that all comes about with plate tectonics. I wanted to follow that up with uh, the layers of sediments or or what I, what the composition of the actual seafloor is and 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 the different types and and these will be uh, something that comes more into play as we as we do primary production um, and as we actually talk about the benthic environment in terms of ecology and biogeochemical cycling. Uh, but for this lecture we're going to very quickly just go over the different types of, of marine sediments, where they come from, and what which ones are most prevalent. Um, and essentially as it will be with the rest of the course, um, we're going to start with uh, basically defining the sediments. So how do we define them and, and classify them? Um, so the, the definition of marine sediments, uh, really, or any sediments, is the accumulation of particles, um, whether they're in organic or inorganic, and that means are they generated from a living source or a non-living source. Uh, and we'll, we'll, we'll classify them in, in several ways. Uh, the, we do classify them according to size and sortedness, and I'll explain what that is only really briefly. Um, and then origins, so where they come from, um, or how they're formed and source where they come from and composition are, are, are really the two main things that I'll focus on or that I'll hold you accountable for really. Um, but first the, the sediment size and sortedness and size is self-explanatory sort of how big are the particles um, but, it, but it has a lot to do with um, you know where the sediments lie is very dependent on their size and mass um, but also the size combined with the shape uniformity, so are they all pretty spherical, are they all amorphous, they have angular and uh, ununiform shapes, de de that determines its porosity, so how much space is in between each particle here, um, and, and it also determines how well sorted it is. Now if we just look at size, um, uh, if we look at all these things together we can come up with a phi number, which 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 is a basically a a measurement of of how well sorted they can be, um, but you're not going to hold you accountable for that at all. Um, but what what we do find is that the majority of sediments, uh, marine sediments, are are made up of, you know, very f the w a wide variation in uh, in sands and silts and and clays and these these are determined by their composition. They're all mineral particles, which means they're broken down rocks um, and size. But how well sorted they are is, so if you have, um, you know, very uniform versus very ununiform uh, sediment particles, they can either pack together very well and be very well sorted, which usually reduces their porosity, or not be packed together very well, um, which usually increases their their porosity, leaves more spaces here. Um, and then if if there are many different types of, of sediments all packed together, they usually sort very tightly and, and leave low porosity also. Whoops, skipped one. Uh, the other thing about size and 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 um, and mass of a of a particle uh, determines its sinking rate, and we'll 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 start to talk about sinking of particles um, in, uh, over and over again uh, throughout the throughout the course and its importance. But so the size of something definitely and mass of something definitely has a a a, a very strong effect on on uh, on how quickly it's going to sink. Um, so essentially, if this was settling velocity and time to settle over four kilometers of ocean, which is about two and a half miles of ocean, you know these large guys, boulders, which are ten inches or bigger, all the way down to a pebble, they they really settle quite quickly. So we don't even have a number there. But when we get to sand, um, you know, a sand that is no greater than two millimeters, um, they start to have pretty slow sled settling rate in the ocean, and it could take almost two days without currents. For, for a piece of sand to settle over 2.5 miles or 4 kilometers of ocean. And when you get as small as a piece of clay, which is 0 0.004 millimeters large, wide, um, you get a very slow settling rate. And it can take up to 50 years for that piece of clay to settle from the surface over 4 kilometers of ocean. So that gets to become very significant. All right, let's move on to source um, and origin. Uh, so the first source of, of marine sediments is what we call terrigenous. Um, it's also called lithogenous, but if we break down genus, uh, 
I, I always find breaking down the terms, and I'll do this over and over throughout the course, break down the terms into their meanings, or try to remember it in parts, and you'll remember what it means. Um, so teri means earth, terrigenous, ter, terra, um, and genus means produced. So, so what these mean is they're produced from earth. Um, so terrigenous sediments are inorganic uh, because they come from the erosion of land, essentially. Um, rock that has formed um, prehistorically gets broken down through erosion um, and is washed through the water um, the water cycle in, into the ocean or onto the beach and settles and becomes the sediment. A similar thing happens from volcanic, volcanic erush, eruption. It will disperse many mineral particles into the air and settle. Um, and then also sands and dirts on land, which come from the same sources, erosion of land, volcanic eruption, can get blown with storms into the ocean and eventually settle and become uh, a marine sediment. Um, and this is a very large portion of all marine sediments across the globe, um, roughly 45%, so that's quite a big percentage. <clears throat> so where do the silts and the sands come from? Well, we spoke of that. They, they start out at ro as rock, and then they're either eroded by wind or water or glacier movements. Uh, they end up washing into... Um, you know, part of the water cycle, tributaries of rivers, rivers washed down and then either settle on the coast or in the ocean, or they can be actually picked up by by um, by weather, by atmospheric circulation and blown in on the wind and into the ocean. So essentially we're talking about weathered minerals, terrigenous. All right, we see them washed down river, de river deltas and settle out into the ocean. So the next uh, and the largest source uh, of, of marine sediments is what we call biogenous, so, or biogenous, so we can break that down, biology and produced, so produced from life. Okay, so these are obviously from organic living sources, um, and essentially they're the accumulated hard parts, or the shells, or any other hard part of an organism um, uh, after it has died. Uh, many of the organisms in the ocean, um, especially the microscopic ones, um, organisms such as forams, coccoliths, coccolithophores, I should say, radiolarians, diatoms, and we're going to go over these guys in, in much more detail in our primary production and, and uh, heterotrophic lectures. But um, these guys form shells, um, you know, whether it's out of calcium or silicon. Or, 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 or some combination of the two, they form these shells that are heavy when they die, or heavy enough to settle anyway, when they die, they settle down to the ocean floor, and these make up 55% of all the ocean floor. So I said around 55 for biogenous and around 45 for, for lithogenous, which, which basically makes up 100%, um, but, but it's really a little less than 55, a little less than 45, and so there's this very, very small less than 1% that makes up the rest of the sediments. So, but biogenous, so most of the marine sediments come from an organic, um, uh, originally from an organic source. And how does that work? Biogenous sediments form through, well, sedimentation. Seems kind of obvious, but the process of sedimentation is life grows uh, in the surface ocean, um, just like plants do and eat just like other organisms do, and when they die, they settle out through the water column, just like we see here. <coughs> and when they settle off into the bottom, they, they, they form the sediments. PP standing for primary production. And that's really the main source of the organisms that, that settle, but not just primary production. And we'll talk about that some more in a later lecture. Some of them accumulate so, uh, so much to such a great extent. So there have been prehistoric periods of such great production of organisms that they have settled out in gigantic layers um, and and form huge layers of biogenous sediments that, that, that eventually become become rock. And here we have the white here we have the white cliffs of Dover, which have eventually been uplifted and exposed from prehistoric times, and they're made up entirely of of calcium carbonate shells from microscopic organisms. Um, so less than 1% um, of, of the remaining sediments, so remember the two main ones are biogenous and lithogenous, um, and the next biggest source is what we call hydrogenous. Um, 
Hydro meaning from the water, produced. Produced from the water. I didn't write that here, but that's what that breaks down to. And these essentially are chemical precipitates. So when essentially the water uh, chemistry comes to essentially a, 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 the exact point um, or the exact environmental conditions necessary for something to for, t for ions to come together and form a, a particle that'll settle out. So that's what we call a precipitate. Um, this happens uh, very much near um, tectonic events or vol underwater volcanic events like the mid-ocean ridges where they're constantly pouring out material from from the Earth's core. Um, these things form uh, for example manganese nodules. So a lot of manganese pours out, it precipitates out and drops onto the floor and there's these are large examples, they're smaller examples, but on a whole we're talking about a very small less than one percent portion of the marine sediments. Um, and and the last one that I that I'd like you guys to know about is cosmogenous, so produced from the cosmos. And literally, we're talking about space particles. Uh, so we have these large bodies of 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 um, co um, you know bodies of rock like meteors, meteorites. Uh, in space, they they impact with the Earth's atmosphere and they break up into these tiny particles. Most of them do anyway. Um, uh, and if they fall on the ocean and settle out to the ground, they make up a small portion of the... We do detect them in marine sediments. And you see that these are much, 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 much less than 1% of all the ocean floor, um, but they are, they, are, um, they are a fact. They are a realistic part. Um, so essentially, I want you to remember the two, the, the four different types, but which ones are the two main ones, the biogenous and the lithogenous, um, and, and where they come from. Um, and, and we'll get to more about why they're important later in the course. Thanks for joining me. See you next lesson.